So here we're going to use the, uh, the fundamental concepts that we learnt in the introductory video about domain and range to tackle some slightly harder problems. So for example, number one, let's let y be some function of x, okay, and it's going to be equal to the square root of x minus 5 in this case. Well, we know from the introductory video that we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So, what do we mean by that? Well, that means that x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0, okay? It cannot be negative, so that's looking at our domain. So if we solve this inequality, x has to be greater than or equal to 5. So we can say that the domain of this function is such that x is a real number, okay, where x is bigger than or equal to 5. Okay, now we can check that because if we put a 5 in, we end up taking the square root of 0, which we know is like our absolute limit, okay? And if we put any number bigger in, we're just taking the square root of a positive number, which just gives us a positive number back. So we've 100% we've got that question correct. Now, if we have a look at the range, the range isn't going to change, okay? So the range is just going to be such that y is a real number where y is greater than or equal to 0, okay? We see it here that if we put in the number 5, okay, we get our square root of 0, which is just 0, which is our absolute limit in the range, okay? Uh, and if we put in any uh, number bigger than 5, we end up with any positive number that it is that we're looking for, okay? So uh, our range doesn't change between the square root of x minus 5 and just the square root of x, okay? Our range is the same, but our domain shifted. Let's have a look at another example. So a second example now, let's take y to be equal to some function of x, g of x this time, and that's going to be equal to x minus seven all squared. Now we know from the introductory video that I can square any number. So there's nothing that I can put in here for x which won't be able to be squared. So the domain is such that x is just any real number, okay? I can square anything. Now the range though, we know that when I square a number, I cannot get a negative number back in return. I can only get positive numbers or a zero. So uh, y is a real number such that y is uh, greater than or equal to zero. Now, if we want y to be equal to zero, we would put a seven in for x. And if we want y to tend towards you know, the positive end of the spectrum, then we just put numbers in for x, which are greater than seven. Okay, so uh, our, our domain and our range here hasn't actually changed from the x squared function, okay? Now a third example, we might do uh, y to be equal to some function of x, h of x this time. And this is going to be equal to 5 divided by 2x minus 4. Now we know from the introductory video that I cannot have this denominator equal to zero. Okay, we cannot divide numbers by zero. So 2x minus 4, that cannot be equal to zero. Okay, so if we solve this inequality, 2x cannot be 4, so x may not be 2. Okay, so when we're looking at stating our domain of this function, x has to be some real number such that x is not equal to 2. x can be anything else. It can be positive, it can be negative, it doesn't matter, but x cannot be 2 because that would be an instance where we're dividing by 0. Now if we have a look at the range for this function, well y is just any real number again, okay, uh, but y can never be 0. If I wanted to make this fraction equal to 0, I would need to, to be able to get this numerator equal to zero, which I can't, the numerator's stuck at five. So there's no way of changing that numerator, I can't get a zero in there. So y cannot ever be zero, but it can be anything else. So y is not equal to zero. If we take a look at a fourth example now, so these ones start to get a little bit harder, we start to combine a couple of things. So let's let y be some function of x which is two over the square root of three x minus six. Now, if we start by looking at our domain, we know firstly that the part underneath this square root, okay, so we cannot take the square root of negative numbers. So the three x minus six has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's looking at the square root component. We cannot take the square root of negative numbers. But we also know, secondly, 
that uh, the whole denominator, the square root of 3x minus 6, that cannot be equal to 0 because that would constitute us dividing by a negative, uh, dividing by 0, which we cannot do. So if we take these two uh, situations and kind of combine them, if I start over here at number 2, this means that 3x minus 6 cannot be 0. But over here it says 3x minus 6 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So when I kind of combine these together, what I end up with is that 3x minus 6 has to be greater than 0. Okay, so yes, uh, the part underneath the square root could be 0 when we're only looking at the square root component. But then when we realize that that would actually mean we're dividing by 0 over here, we have to take this equal sign out. So 3x minus 6 has to be greater than 0 in this case. So if we solve this inequality, we see that x has to be greater than 2. So our domain here is such that x is a real number where x is larger than 2. Now if we have a look at the range of this function, okay, so what can I put into here? Well, I definitely can't get a 0 out. We know that. So in terms of the range, we cannot get a 0. But what else can I not get which is different to the other divisions that we've looked at? Well, I can't get a negative number. If I wanted to get a negative number, I would need this denominator to be negative. But there is no way I can make that denominator negative. There's nothing I can take the square root of which gives me a negative number in return. So it also cannot be negative, the range. Therefore, my range is such that y is a real number where y is larger than 0. It cannot be 0 and it cannot be negative. Okay, so that one's a little bit trickier because we're combining a couple of things and the range gets a little bit harder.